What do you see when you look up at the stars? Now, I want to talk about that today, but more importantly, what do you see when you look at yourself, at others? You know, our lives are moving pretty fast, and at times it requires us to make quick judgments, fast decisions, coming up with a perspective on something or someone. And as we come up with those perspectives, many times it's just from that first look, initial impression, what we've heard from others, from past experiences, and it might not have anything to do with the current reality. You know, perspective is not bad or good by default. It's just a point of view. Each of us have them. Perhaps you've seen the ladder of inference. It describes the thinking process we go through, starting with a fact or observation, all the way up to how we believe and act. And when we talk about our perspectives, it's when we begin to filter down what we're seeing and observing, and we come to our set of collective facts. And ultimately, that's then going to impact how we ultimately believe and we act. How are you when it comes to arriving at your perspectives? Do you ever take a step back and try to understand why is it that you believe the way you do about something or someone? Do you ever try to see other points of view? Well, I want to look at the stars with you today and share four things that I hope impact what you see. First and foremost, you are a star. Do you believe that? Not that much, huh? Well, you are. You are stars. Each of you, unique, evolving, designed. You know, each star in the sky had their unique mix of temperature, color, composition, brightness. And each one of you have your unique mix of skills, talents, gifts, personalities, temperaments, experiences. Each of you have your own thoughts, your own words must be heard. Now, perhaps you don't have this perspective of yourself. Have you collected, you filter down your set of facts, your conclusions that are different from what maybe someone else has told you, from maybe past experiences in your life? And ultimately, that has impacted then how you believe about yourself. But it's true, each of you are a star. It's so important to see that. For when you do, it can be a game changer. It can be a life changer. Now, it's also important to realize the impact we can have on stars in our life. I'm realizing this right now more and more at home with my son, Chad. Now, with all the great intentions of me helping him learn new skills, get ready for life, be okay, many times I am unintentionally dimming his light. Too many times he's hearing from me, he needs to be doing more of this. He needs to become more like that. And I've seen his eyes, his brightness dim right before me. What he should be feeling and hearing every day of his life is, Chad, my son, you are an awesome star. You know, we all have stars in our life, whether it's our families, our organizations, our teams, our communities. We need to embrace them. We need to encourage them. We need to know how awesome it is to be with all these unique stars in our life. You know, I've always said the worst team would be 20 kips. You don't want a team of 20 kips. However, you have someone almost completely opposite of me, then sprinkle in a bunch of folks on that diverse spectrum. If we can all collaborate, and if we can all realize we're a bunch of unique stars, a better team you could not find. Each of you are a star. It's so important to see that. And then get excited that you get to hang out and encourage a lot of unique stars in your life. So we go to the second point. I want to look at a constellation with you. Very simple view of Ursa Major, third largest constellation in the sky. So take a look at this. Think about what you're seeing. And what's interesting is you look up at the stars, we can all look at the same group of stars and see different things. Now, I'm guessing that many of you saw the Big Dipper. You're familiar with that shape, you've seen it before, and perhaps your eyes even went right to those stars, and the picture even looked more like this. The other stars almost faded away. You know, many times we're drawn to the brightest stars, 
or again, shapes and connections that we've seen, that we're familiar with. We're drawn to the few, forgetting the many. We like the connections, that's easy for us to see. That makes sense to us. And of course what we see is going to depend on are we out in the field, are we in the city, what was our point of view? Now how many of you saw this? Ursa Major is also called the Great Bear. So did any of you make this connection and see this kind of picture? Now I'm guessing most of you, if not all of you, did not see this picture, but it was there. For me, I saw this. <laughs> I didn't really see that. <laughs> but just think. Think of all the pictures, the shapes, the connections that are there in just this one part of the sky. So many views, so many views. What do you see here? How many boards do you see? Well, if you start on the left side, four boards and a story done. However, if you view this from the right side, there's three boards. Hmm, which is right? Neither? Both? Well, the important point is not to just rush to one judgment, one conclusion, one view. So my second point is, know how you got to your point of view. We all have points of view, but do we really understand them? Not that you can explain your point of view factually, this is what it is, but where did it come from? Why do I believe the way I do? You know, we all have biases, which are a bend, a tendency that we bring as we look at people, as we look at situations and challenges. And if we're not careful, those can quickly just move and become our set of facts, our reality, when again, it may have nothing to do with the current reality. What do you see? What other perspectives, what other views might you be missing? We move to the third point. I want to go back to the Great Bear. I want to look at a couple stars. We have Alioth. Alioth is 81 light years away. And we have Alula Borealis, which is over 400 light years away. As you can see, Alioth is brighter. It's actually the brightest star in this constellation. And they call that its apparent brightness. But watch and observe what happens when we put both of these stars the same distance from the Earth. Now, when we measure their absolute brightness, which is another term scientists use, measuring their true brightness, the dimmer star is now so much more brighter. This leads to my third point. The closer they are, the brighter the star. Let me tell you a story about Donnie. I'm a new manager, new team. I'm joining up with folks. I meet Donnie. He tells me, okay, Kip, I'm nearing retirement. You're going to find me, I'm a solid performer. I like to do this, I don't like to do that, and please, once a month is enough to meet with me. Now, this was very consistent with what the previous manager told me, so I thought, this is great, sounds fine. We began to work together, and what I observed was true. Don was doing just fine. A couple months in, I thought, what kind of manager am I here? I need to start to understand Don. I need to get to know him better. I was skipping a one-on-one -on -one every now and then, so I said, hey, Donnie, I know you don't need to meet more often, I want to meet more often. I need to start to get to know you more. I need to start to be a real manager. Let me tell you, this guy was impressive. This guy was so impressive. The skills, the experiences, everything that he had, the organization could benefit far more from Donnie moving forward. Oh, I got to know him. And I then had the privilege of coaching and seeing him do some of the most incredible things through the rest of his career. It was so true. The closer I got to him, the brighter he became. How much do we know about the people on our teams, in our organizations, in our communities? Are we letting that first look, initial impression, maybe what someone else has told us, dictate what we think they're about, what they can do? How many normal stars are out there that are actually a lot brighter than the ones that are maybe out front, louder, apparently stronger within the organization. They're out there. We just need to take the time to get to know them. What do you see when you look at others? 
Let's not let our perspective be built from the apparent person we see, but from the absolute or true person they are. Going to the final point. It's interesting to think about brightness. And the term they use for brightness is magnitude. And they came up with a scale about 2,000 years ago. And they said, let's use this, and we're going to pick one of the brightest stars, Polaris, the North Star, first magnitude star. And then the third, fourth, fainter, it goes that way. Now, later, the scientists said, let's use this scale for everything. Every object in the sky, we're going to use this scale for, which means the sun actually has the lowest magnitude on the scale. So the lower the magnitude, the brighter the object appears. I thought this was kind of backwards or interesting, but then I thought about it more. I said, magnitude, okay, what's, what is magnitude? Let me look at a simple definition, then let's call it the state of importance, which leads to my final point. Less of me, the brighter I'll be. Or the less important I make myself, the brighter I'll be. Two scenarios. I want you to tell me who's shining brighter. Star quarterback leads his team from being 20 points down. He runs in one touchdown, throws the game-winning touchdown as time expires. They carry him off the field into the press conference. They ask him, how does it feel to be the star of this incredible comeback? The star quarterback answers, well, what do you think? I was made for this. I told the coaches, just give me the ball. You tell me if there's a better quarterback in this league right now. I don't think so. Same scenario, different star quarterback. Into the press conference. How does it feel to be the star of this incredible comeback? This star quarterback says, well, first, what about the defense? Holding them to zero points the second half. My offensive line, were they great or what? All the protection I needed for those throws. Great calls by the coaches second half. It feels great to be a part of this team. It feels great to be a part of this team. Who's shining brighter? Two stars, but I believe there is one star there that's showing a different level of character, of leadership, of light. Yes, it's okay to be confident. Yes, you want to feel good about what you can do. But I find those that have that humble confidence to be the ones that make the biggest influence, the ones that shine the brightest. Your light's there. It's going to shine. But what can you be doing to highlight the other stars around you? Another way to view a star. Another way to truly shine. So four things. As I looked at the stars and how I see them, how that might impact how we see ourselves and others. Most importantly, you are a star. Know how you got to your point of view. The closer they are, the brighter the star, and less of me, the brighter I'll be. And if we go back to that ladder, I don't think it's as much of a ladder as it is a slide of inference. Because I believe once you start to formulate your set of facts, your perspectives, I think it quickly can go down that slide into interpretations, conclusions, to how you're going to believe and act. It is so important that we slow down, that we stop, and we make sure that perhaps we're seeing much more than what we originally see. It's critical that we don't let our beliefs and actions just continue to be filtering from our original default. Now, all of this is not going to happen naturally. In fact, the opposite is true. We have to be very proactive. We have to really be thinking about what we're seeing when it comes up to driving our perspectives. But when we can do that, oh, it can change our lives. And it will change how you see yourself and how you see others. I think this quote summarizes so much of this well. For it's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. So again, I ask you, what do you see? Thank you.